Hey there everybody, Matt Carter here. And Jessica Carter from CarterMatt.com. This video is about the mass Singer from Wednesday night. We now know for sure who is the Ladybug. We will discuss yeah. that, but we will also go through the other performers on the night. The Fox, the Tree, the Flower, and the Rottweiler, and we'll talk about not just who they are, but also where they stack up and who, how our finale could be. Because this could actually be a really controversial ending to the season because I feel like there are a lot of people left who are really, really good. Yeah, really good. There, There's some competition here. It's not just about, for me anyways, who's under the mask anymore. Now it's, there is some competition here. Yeah, there, there's some competition. And I actually feel like, you know, last season... When T-Pain won, I know there are some people who are sort of like, oh, you know, I wish Donny Osmond would have won. But it didn't feel like there was, like, that argumentative an atmosphere. I'm kind of curious now if there's going to be a demand after this season for people to start to want, to just want to know more about the actual voting process. Because none of this makes any sense to me whatsoever. No. <laughs> and, you know, it would be nice to kind of get a better sense of that. But before... We dive into anything. If you like this video, give us a like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any other updates we have coming your way. Yep. All right. I think we kind of knew that the ladybug was going to be Kelly Osborne. Yeah, you've been saying that for weeks now. I thought maybe a Sophie Simmons, maybe. I was actually just hoping it was going to be Mariska. <laughs> yeah. I just ho was hoping and praying that that's how it was actually going to fall out. I knew it probably wasn't. But man, wouldn't that have been such a great reveal. I'm not saying that Kelly wasn't a great reveal. Yeah. But it was a consensus online that that's who it was. You had thought that it was. Yeah. Everybody thought that it was. And it feels a lot this season like there are... There's just a lot of people who know who everyone is already. In the first season, I felt there was a lot less of that. And I don't know if it was because people weren't looking. Yeah. Or maybe people just didn't know everyone. I know there were some people like, oh, it's Donny Osmond for sure and all yeah. that. But I felt like there was a little bit more surprise in a lot of them that were out there. But this season... Everyone's just like, this is the list. It's this person, this person, this person. And so far it is. This person, this person, this person. And that's kind of sucking the fun out of it. <laughs> well. <laughs> For me. For me, I've always tried to say that, like, at, like, midway point, I stop really caring who's under the mask anymore. And I just kind of transition over to making it, like, about the journey of these people. And sometimes. Yes. Sometimes that works. I'm not. A, I don't think I'm invested in anyone on the level that I was with the monster in season one right now. Oh, but, I am. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. We. I think we know. I don't think the leopard is in this episode, though. Oh, I know, but you know, I love him. Yeah. I, I okay, am. Okay, but I am invested. Really invested in someone in this episode as well. Okay. Good. Well, that makes me happy, and I. I, I am invested in some people as well. I think part of the benefit of season one is that both the monster and the lion made it really, really far. And, you know, I, there were people who knew they were Rumor Willis and knew that they were T-Pain, but they were mostly just online in a couple of corners, and it didn't feel like that had spread that far outward. I think this time around, there's a little bit more of that. I mean, there's one person who I feel like both of us are still fundamentally fairly clueless on, but every, the pieces are starting to fall into place with other people. Yeah, they are. I'm happy that Kelly Osborne did this show. You know, she, she she is a singer. She hasn't really done that in a long period of time. Yeah. And, you know, I think she I think it was fun to have someone who was kind of combative with the judges over yes. some of their guesses. <laughs> Especially the Lindsay Lohan one. That was it was fun. She's she is fun and it was a lot of fun to watch her. Yeah, it was the Lindsay Lohan thing was just even funnier to me because Lindsay Lohan's a judge on the Australian version of this show. But, uh, you know, I I liked Kelly's enthusiasm for it. Yes. She seemed game to want to do it. And ultimately, you know, those are the sort of people who I want on this show who can sort of get into the character. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if Kelly ever really got into the character of a ladybug, but she kind of had her own character as the ladybug. She had some ladybug sass. Yeah. Now, the one criticism I am going to give this show yeah. is with the clues. There were some clues that totally made sense for Kelly, and they all added up. Yeah. But at the end of the show, when they were showing some of the clues at the bottom of the screen, 
I'm going to give a little finger wag to the show for that baseball bat. And somehow we, the audience, yeah. are supposed to connect a baseball bat to Ozzy Osbourne biting the head off an actual bat on stage. This is not a connection, guys. So <laughs> now that they have revealed that it's like that, that we're going to have things that are so far from the clue that you really have to stretch a baseball bat and biting the head off an animal on stage, that I am starting to feel like maybe Wayne Brady is the fox. I felt like it's maybe Jamie Foxx. Yeah. I, just from the, the singing and some of the superhero clues and all that sort of stuff, but... Who knows? A baseball bat, I'm supposed to think, is Ozzy Osbourne on stage biting the head of a bat. So, uh, here we are. So maybe there's a connection that I'm really not seeing with Wayne Brady. And maybe they are plucking out this. He had two little voiceovers on a Batman episode a million years ago, and that's the connection. Yeah, I mean, with... The Fox, I, I think some of it may just be they want to try to do something to throw people off a little bit. This is a way to do that. Yep, I mean, I is. think there were other other little clues in that, you know, they mentioned that he found fame alongside a number of other people as a part of some sort of group. You could sort of say Wayne, Drew Carey, Ryan Stiles, Colin Mockery, that that was kind of... The group on whose line. But and, that's also the same with Jamie Foxx as he was on Living Color with a group of people. Yeah. No, no, that's very... And that's true. I will say, out of the people tonight, I overall, I'm probably most invested in the Fox, but I don't know... I don't know how much oh, of that great. is just like me just being skewed because I love Wayne Brady. I mean, when I was a teenager, I would... I, I probably have seen every episode of the that version of Who's Line like three or four times and... I I always just used to want Wayne Brady to be my friend because he I was just... I think we all want that. Yeah. He's wonderful. And if the Fox turns out to be Wayne Brady, I'm going to be beyond thrilled. I want him to be Wayne Brady. I do too. And I just think, you know, Wayne, he's always been such a really good singer that nobody ever wanted to take him seriously because he does all these, like, comedic little songs. Mm -hmm. This is his chance, and he's going for it, and he's dancing, and he's being awesome. Not, I don't know if I love this performance as much as the second one he did, but I think it was still really, really good. Yeah, it was still really, really good. No no qualms here, anyway. No, but and I will say that it was kind of the opposite for me with the Rottweiler. His last performance, I was kind of like, eh, this is okay, yeah. but this one was really good. This was the best performance of the season, in my view. Well, well, boom. I okay. I, I have I have a couple of innate biases here. All right. I have probably listened to Castle on a Hill by Ed Sheeran at least like two thousand times. This is on my. I have like a mix of songs that are on like my writing mix, where I'll just listen to them while I'm writing. And this, this is. And so I, I love this song. I, I I am learning about things about Matt as well. <laughs> Well, I've known you for 10 years and I write with you every day and I didn't know this. Well, okay, so I, I do... Yeah, I, I, I love this song. I love his rendition of it. I thought it was emotional, well-timed. I yeah. think he performed it really well. This is the episode where I really start to get on board the It's Chris Daughtry. Only because yeah. Chris Daughtry has this break in his voice. Mm -hmm. That when he ends certain notes, you can kind of hear the vocal ending of it change a little bit. Yeah. He had that break in one moment in this song. And the moment I, I even if I, there was no buzz or rumors out there already, I, I would have kind of jumped to that conclusion at that point. Yeah. And some of the clues that they gave in this episode also still lean to him yeah. that he came about in sort of an unconventional way, like. American Idol, yeah. which was at that time very unconventional to find singers, and yeah, I I think it's probably him. But man, what a what a performance! It, definitely the best performance of the night. Yeah, if Chris Daughtry, by the way, does not make the finale, just like he didn't make the finale on <laughs> Idol, there is gonna be a problem, people. Yeah, there is. But uh, no, that would that would be so sad. Don't don't do it to Chris Daughtry again. No, he's been through too much on Fox programs as it is. <laughs> Uh, well, Ida was on facts back then. All right, well, let's talk about a couple other people that we had yeah. here. We have 
the return of I'm trying to make the flower because the flower performed Amazed by Lone Star, which as someone who grew up in Texas, mm-hmm. this song was played at every single school <laughs> dance I went to for about six years. I never have listened to this song once outside of either a school dance or a singing show. I know all the words to it. Smart move by Patti LaBelle, who is obviously the flower. He has to try and change it up a little bit. Yeah, and I mean, I think it was, it was, it was actually probably my favorite performance of hers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was really good. Well, she's in, just incredible. Yeah, it was, it just, it didn't feel just like Patti LaBelle. It felt, you know, interesting and yeah. different yeah. and... You know, I, I'm learning things about maybe who Patti LaBelle really is as a person. Yeah, I didn't know a lot about her. I just knew her voice and knew knew her as a singer, and I didn't really know about her. So this show has definitely brought that in for me as well, getting to know just a little bit about her, which is nice. Yeah, I like that she's kind of introverted in some ways, that she likes to be away from a lot yeah. of stuff. And I, it was just... <laughs> And maybe that's a part of her being the flower because she likes nature. And, yeah, uh, yeah it's like, I don't know these things. You know, I, you always elevate somebody to Patti LaBelle where they're just, like, legend and that's just, like, stamped on them. Yeah, and, then, and that's all you really know. Yeah, and you don't ever imagine, like, that this person has, like, an actual, like, day-to-day life. <laughs> well, it's hard when you're a legend, right? You are, like, a beautiful flower put on a pedestal all the time because you are a legend. Yeah, but at the same time, if you don't water your plant enough, your plant still doesn't turn out well, even if you are Patti LaBelle, and I think that's probably what makes kind of those sort of hobbies fun for her, is that, you know, it's a level playing field with her and everyone else in the world, but, yeah, yeah, I I, I like this performance a lot from Patti. Yeah, me too. I mean, really... I feel like out of everyone on this episode, Patti LaBelle is probably the most likely to make it to the finale. Because how do you eliminate Patti LaBelle? Well, how do you eliminate Gladys Knight? Are you kidding me on that? I don't know how that happened. Like, it's... You're talking about people who are just, like you said, legendary. These are not people that I would ever expect to end up leaving. Or even Adani Osmond. He is legendary. Yeah, I guess it's true. I mean, maybe they'll just do what they did with Gladys. I mean, they'll get they'll bring her to the finale, and then maybe she'll finish in, like, third place, and it feels like they will honor her in that way. Yeah, because I'm feeling that, that like, a top three for me right now is the fox. Yeah. And we're going to see the leopard. Of course. And we're going to see the tree. I, I'm going to throw it out there. I feel like the tree is... Amazing. I have no idea who this is. I've seen some people talking about people online, and I don't even know who they're talking about. But I don't even care, because the tree is incredible, and her voice just keeps growing and growing. I do not know who this is, but I love them. Well, I think that's the fun about having just this one person who we don't know all that much about. Yeah. Because it does give us an opportunity to be like, oh, it is, it's just the tree. Do we like the tree? Do we want to root yes. for the tree? Do we want to have some fun with the tree? Like, I mean, I don't know if I would put the tree over the Rottweiler. Like, I'm kind of neck and neck with that. I think I've think i just seen the Rottweiler have a mediocre performance last week. Amazing this week. But for me, the tree's been really steadily just good. Yeah. I, really good. And this brings me back to the, I don't know how this show works. <laughs> yeah, the same thing. I, I don't know how it is going to work. And I think some of it is a little bit of personality too, because yeah. while the leopard slash seal is a great singer, yeah, that personality and the way he's playing his character, I feel like people are just invested in yeah. him. And that it's not only about him being a good singer, it's about him being just... This bigger than life, amazing character that you buy into. I think if they're gonna have a final, this, this final three maybe based on personality meet singing, if like combining the two, then you're probably gonna have the leopard, you're probably gonna have the tree, and I would say yeah. the fox. Yeah, because the tree has that personality too. Beautiful voice, just fun. What a fun costume, right? Yeah. Shakes around, it's all it's very fun. Everything about the tree, I really like. Yeah. And if Seal wasn't on this season, the tree would be my favorite. 
Did you have one of these moments that I've talked about before where you're sitting there watching this episode and you're just sort of like, okay, well, I'm watching someone dressed as a tree up there performing <laughs> while being judged by a guy puppeting a dog with a, with a cigar in its mouth. Yeah, it was, I don't know, man. I don't know anything about this puppet dog that Triumph, was on yeah. there. Triumph, yeah. I... Funny, fun, cool little gimmick. I'll, t- I'll give it yeah, that, I, too. Yeah, I like Triumph, but like, I was surprised that they brought Triumph on this show as a, as a judge. It's probably the first dog puppet judge in the history of reality television. Probably. Correct me if I'm wrong, but anyway, we will wrap up this video on The Masked Singer. We want to know from you guys. I mean, did you know that Kelly was the ladybug? Were you surprised? But beyond all of that, who are you rooting for? To win, like we're at that point now where we gotta pick our favorites regardless Seal. of who they. Okay, <laughs> but Seal, whether it's Wayne Brady, <laughs> anyone else, let us know in the comments. And if you enjoy this video, give us a like, subscribe, and you can support us further by checking that link in the description to the Cardamat store. And we'll see you here next time.